We thought it was a snooker competition. <laughs> <laughs> I brought a cue down me and all. And I goes, no, you won't need that. You're going in there to introduce the fighters. <laughs> Is that what your role was? Can we introduce them to... <laughs> How are you? Uh, this is Christy. Christy. <laughs> oh, no. That's the introduction to uh, No, do you know what? I got a phone call a couple of weeks ago of uh, Dillian White's management. Of course, yeah. Right. He just casually dropped cousin, that in. Like, he cousin Dillian, you know. Dillian White. <laughs> <laughs> you see uh, the family resemblance already. Do you know, know his great grandfather's actually from Dublin? Shut up. You shut up. Okay, I will shut up. No, his great, his great grandfather was from Dublin and went over to Jamaica. Right. And I met a, a woman over there, and it comes down through the generation. So it was actually, it was actually Irish in him, like you could be related. He's Dublin Jamaican, yeah, yeah, Dublin yeah. Jamaican. What Jamaica that? Yeah, huh? Jamaica. Yeah, <laughs> oh, just made, just about made it. Um, so you, you were down, you were the boxing MC. I oh, was the boxing MC, and I'd had small experience doing it, nothing major, and come here. There's a lot more to it than you think. So a very, very good friend of mine, uh, Terry Kavner, who was a well-renowned MC. And who's Aaron McGregor's... Um, other half. Other half, yeah. yeah. And also a very talented singer and songwriter as well. Okay. Yeah, so um, I called upon him and I says, Terry, what do I need to do here? And I just thought it was like, oh, yeah, find out a red corner. Yeah, it's, it's, and it's that, not. It's, it's not. not. No, there's a bit more to it than that. So you've got to find out, you know, who it's, it's sanctioned by the Boxing Union of Ireland and who the facilities manager is and, you know, name all these people. Then the promotions, who it's been promoted by and, you know, then you've got to call out the boxer, you've got to call out his form, you know, as a professional, yeah. you know, the stuff that he's won. Um, and you have to do the fire, fire announcement as well. Like, now if there is a fire... No. Get the fuck out of my way. <laughs> no. no. Right, no I just go, if you see me running, there's a fire. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um... No, so uh, that, that's what it was like. Now, and, and I'll be coming out of the first couple of fights, I was a little bit rusty, like, and it's mad because I was, I was talking to Holly outside, and Holly was going, Jesus, you looked great and all that. And she was going, What was the story? You know, and I did, when I looked at myself in the mirror, you looked the in the thing, I really looked well. So, Roddy Collins, me and Roddy have become um, mates over the last while, and I said to Roddy, I need to get a bleeding suit for this, like, do you know yeah. what I mean? So I worry about it. He's, he's the best man in the world. You know, like, you know, Roddy, I thought he goes to me, what's so his chest are you? And he says, uh, 44. A beautiful jacket there, he said, it'll fit you. The lovely crushed velvet black jacket, right? So I met him on Saturday morning in Ballymoney. He was going to the NCT. And uh, he gave me the jacket. Tried the jacket on. Perfect. Jacket was perfect. Then I done a thing for St. Francis there before Christmas, the St. Francis ball. And I was hosting that. So the short that I got, I was collar and cuff. Your man gave me the short. Nice. You get it with the deal. Yeah, yeah. So I had the short. I had the jacket. I got a dicky bow for a tenner. Lovely. Right. I got the schlacks. <laughs> schlacks. <laughs> the schlacks. <laughs> I got the schlacks out of pennies. You got a pair of George Webb. For 16 euros. Now, a lovely pair of loafers I got online nice, from Zara. Yeah. Nice. So I stuck them on and I just played and I carried it off. Like, you know. And wait, come here. Were you, were you staying down there for the night as well? Yeah, they put me up for the two nights. The hotel was... Uh, <clears throat> Raff to say the, the thing was Raff, yeah, Rufus. Oh, Ruff. Oh, Ruff. <laughs> Ruff. oh, what? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, Ruff like, is, fuck. That? is that a synonym or something? <laughs> That's brilliant. And now, I'm not even going to name the hotel because seriously, I think it was a two scar hotel, right? It was in pits, okay. Sure. So, you the way is that feet. because the, all the hotels in the local area were taken up for the boxing, yeah? And uh, I got a great thing how Roddy was telling me, um, <laughs> <laughs> so Roddy was meant to come down on the Saturday night. On the train with his Mrs. Caroline, you know. And you know the way Robbie, Roddy, he's kind, of, he's kind of a mover and a shake, you know. Oh, yeah. And he rings me, he goes, uh, listen, I'm not going to be down. I've got a couple of tickets for the rugby. I'm going to go to the rugby. And I says, yeah, come here, deadly, like. Good I luck. said, look, I'll, I'll see you it. tomorrow, like. <clears throat> so uh, so we got down on the Sunday. Uh, and Because uh, the fight was on a Sunday night, you know. Paddy's night, yeah. Yeah, and your <clears throat> woman goes, uh, yeah, uh, were you meant to be here yesterday? And he went, yeah, 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 that's right. Oh, my God, that's 175. He goes, what? He says, yeah. She says, yeah, well, you, you never rang up and cancelled. She said, I could have given that room to somebody else. He goes, oh, listen, this, that, and just that. Anyway, there was a little bit of a bleeding disagreement. Yeah, yeah. And Roddy says, well, listen, keep your hotel and this, that, and that. So we went outside, <laughs> and he rang about 10 other hotels. He couldn't get a room anyway. He had to go back in with his tail between his legs. <laughs> <laughs> listen, there's been a little bit of a misunderstanding here. <laughs> Can we own her out? <laughs> As in, I misunderstood there wouldn't be other yeah. hotel rooms available. <laughs> so, uh, 
So we had to come back in and uh, and stay in the hotel. And I was just, I was looking at the lineup and, you know, on, on the boxers, on the card and all that. And, I mean, Dillian Wee has performed on some of the biggest... Bills in the world. S- yeah. yeah. And do you know what it was like? No disrespect. It'd be probably like me and you. Yeah. Going and headlining the sphere and then doing all the arenas around America, Ireland and England, right? Yeah. And then all of a sudden, you're playing in the Blade Mullingar house up in Chapel Lizard. Okay, Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So even the way in was in this hotel, and I was going, I was kind of going, Jesus Christ, this is a bit mad, like, you know that? It's, it's, it's almost like a fall from grace, really, isn't it? Like, I don't know, I don't no. think it was a fall from grace. I think he wanted to do something over here, and I get all that, but I'm kind of going, in, in, in a way, there was a humbleness in him. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That he was kind of going, look at, yeah, I am. Would he not have earned a serious amount of money up to this yes, point? Well, of course so why, would. Why, yeah. why, what is his motivation then? I don't know. I mean, you, you, I, I look at stuff like that and you pe- people that say, like, why, why, did, why did you do that? And I mean, like, like, why not do it? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I think it's great that you can go to these towns down, you know, the back end of Bleeding Nowhere yeah. and bring world-class boxing to an event. And I mean... There was a there was a great card. There was only six fights. Yeah. But uh some really good fights on it. Thomas Carty was on fire. Big cabra he, bows, man. Fair play to yeah, Thomas Carty. Thomas, no party, like it. No, let's let's bring the party, Thomas Carty, yeah, like, and I tell you, he gave your man a dig. I see. And it. I'm telling you something, I actually felt it. Yeah. The um, vibrations. So yeah, he know. gave him such a dig and Kidoink. And I, he actually he took me for dinner on the Saturday night. We went to a, a an Italian down there restaurant. And no, he actually did bring you for the dinner. No, That's he did. Euphemism. No, he no, 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 no. He left hook. No, he brought me brought me for dinner. Fair play to him. Really, really nice fella. I'd never met him before. Him and his missus, and um, yeah, he was great. He was great. And there was a few Irish fighters on the bill, and they were um, saying Pierce O'Leary will. Oh, you have to watch Christ. out for this fella. So there was two things I wanted to do over the weekend. Uh, one of the things was. I wanted to watch the Liverpool United game. I'm oh, a yeah. Liverpool. How did I finish, by the way? I'm a oh, li- come here, listen. I'm a, li- I'm a Liverpool fan, right? Fair play to United. We'd yeah. have took that all day, any yeah. day. Of course. Last last minute goal. Yeah. Look, yeah. Eh, I don't hate Man United. And I always no. say that the best manager ever graced the Premiership by far was Alex Ferguson. I don't yeah. think anybody will ever top him. And I take my hat off to you and I go, look, at eh, 4-3, well done. And I can only imagine the game because yeah. it seemed it to was. have all the hallmarks of just one of them ding dongs for ah. United and Liverpool. And Liverpool should have buried us. They had us ah, by should, the balls. Ah, they, had a, come they had a foot in our throat at two one up, should, and he couldn't take it. Should come just, we 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 should have bet bleeding Man City two weeks or weeks ago. But I mean, should have, would have, and could have ain't gonna get you three points. Like absolutely, do you know what I'm saying? Like so, it's, so that was one of the things you missed this weekend. That was one of the things that I missed this weekend, and I missed. I couldn't get a live stream, and I couldn't get anywhere to watch Pierce O'Leary from Sheriff Street. He was fighting a fella over in Birmingham. Oh, right. Sorry, Will. I thought he was fighting at this thing. And I was no, going, well, no, how come no, I didn't no, see it? No, no, no. Imagine you outside trying to get a live no, stream so was, of the no, fight so in the next no, door. So there was loads of boxing on the weekend. There was also a show on in Galway on Saturday night, which had another good mate of mine as well, Luke Keeler, who was a smashing boxer. He was uh, on the main card. He was uh, uh, the main event, and he actually won as well. And he's back after having a bit of a break as well. Lovely fella, Luke, and a very talented boxer as well. And then on the Sunday night, there was um, Once Upon a Time in the West, it was yeah. called. Um, I was calling it the Castle Bar Massacre. Oh, I like that. <laughs> I like that. Um, but it, your, your man texted me today, the fella I done the thing for. He says, you need to get your own... You know the way, like, uh, style. Bruce Ting has his thing, let's get catch ready. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I yeah. need my own catchphrase, okay. so I'm open. Yeah. Maybe we could run a competition Tell you for the what. best the best catchphrase. You know the routine I used to do with the boxing MC? Yeah, it was brilliant. And, uh, yeah, yeah. I'd love to have a shot at that, but come here. Like, so what was your, in terms of catchphrase, so what was it? Is, so is it so like, Bruce, let's get ready to rumble. Yeah, so he has that. Right. So you can't take that. That's oh, his right. copyright. Okay, right. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, so so you, I'd need me own one, like... Uh, Oh well, you got you. I mean, yeah. well, are you thinking these things on the spot? No, I, I know, but I was actually thinking about it today, and it's not something that's so easy. Just you know make up I mean? stuff that just dazzles people, like you, you, you do with your sayings. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, as the sparrow <laughs> hits the crocodile, <laughs> welcoming to the floor, all the way from Albuquerque, yeah. Mexico. Please raise the roof of the one, the only Anto Whelan. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a plane, Hugh. So, 
So yeah, so we need we need a we need a catchphrase. Okay, so so and, and that's how you kind of get your brand. That's what's going to say. It's you. like oh, is this that your man that goes days bleeding, bring your daughter to the slaughter? Or do you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> <laughs> See, that's take, brilliant. Take your son to the moon. <laughs> now, do you know what I mean? Like it's it, it has to have like a a, a catchphrase yeah. for for you for you. So MC. you're saying you might want to do this again? Yeah, I, yeah, I'd love to do it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Handiwork. I it's it's when it's I say not, handy work, I mean you do know, you know what, I mean? what it's 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 not it's a it's a long night because okay. you're there for the night like yeah. do you know what I mean yeah. um and it, it it is like I mean it, there's so much that goes on in it apart from just the two fighters in the ring like when yeah, you see the yeah. dynamics I mean even from the girl that does the ring walking to the doctor that's at the side uh, Connor Hall was the doctor's you to mention him the fella that does the timing Alex McKenzie. Um, the two referees, Porrigo Rocteron and um, there was another fella from the north called Paul. Um, I can't think of a second name off. But there was just so many people involved in yeah, it. Yeah. It's to a what's big going machine. on. It's, it, it really is. And from the people that are doing the interviews to the fighters after the fight, to the trainers, to everyone that kind of comes along with it. And, getting, and the whole logistics of getting everybody there. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, you had fighters that came from the Czech Republic, you had fighters that came from Germany, you had a fighter that came from uh, Argentina, you had a fighter that came from France. Just getting them all to get to that place with the transfers and the hotels and everything that kind of goes on in behind it. But you don't really get to see when you're looking at the telly. Yeah. You kind of go, oh, here's Tyson and here's... Oh, that's going to be a fight, isn't it? Tyson, Tyson and Jake Paul. Paul. Yeah. I hope he knocks the bleeding hydraulics out of your man, Jake Paul. You hope Tyson wins? Yeah. You have to see him training. He looks in some shape. Now, th th there's a little bit of controversy over that, Eric, because people are saying that that was a couple of years ago. Oh, really? So, I, Oh, because he was like, he was saying, are you ready? Oh, yeah, so, like so I I don't know. Okay. Do you know what I mean? I, I'm hoping that Tyson is in that shape. Yeah. Because, to be honest with you, if he is in that shape, your man Jake Paul, he'll be pissing blood to say for about eight months. Yeah. Because if you get hit with one of them digs, it's like getting a kick off a bleeding Cloyd's down oh, down Shoyle Horse or it's like having a kidney stone remember I had a kidney stone last year with a, and I was pissing blood no, for six months no you like having a kidney rock Eric okay kidney, a boulder yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. so it would be a really good fight but I mean all that stuff is happening in the kind of celebrity world kind of thing isn't it is it is it kind of making a mockery of boxing a little bit it's become a little bit you know, I mean, obviously there's serious fighters out there and serious boxing fans out there, but then you've got this celebrity element who are trying to cash in. Now, the thing is, they're, they're able to charge huge amounts of money because they have massive following on YouTube and all these YouTubers and influencers and KSI and your man Jake Paul, as you say. All these people are going into the sporting world now and taking on proper professional boxers and kind of surviving. They're getting by. Is, is it a bit of an insult? I mean, can you think of... Mike Tyson going into the rap game and bleeding, you know, giving KSO your own for his money and bringing out an album or something like that. Yeah, I suppose it's the I level, Yeah, I'm, I'm I mean, looking at Mike Tyson rapping. You kind of you kind of think to yourself, I don't know. But at the end of the day, it all comes down to bleeding Milan Rouge. It's down to money, isn't it? <laughs> it's money, isn't it? Milan, Milan Rouge. You know, Milan. Like it's it's all down to money. Yeah. Uh, like if the money is there, like I'm not a boxer. No. Right. Right. But like genuinely, I boxed for Dominic Savio. Years ago in Ballymun, and I always say Don this. Dominic Savio? Yeah, Dominic what? Savio had a boxing club down in Shangan. Oh, I thought you meant he ran a chipper or something. No, no. So, uh, yeah. And, 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 and as I always say to everyone, who was the cleanest boxer in bleeding Dublin of that much water thrown over me. <laughs> no, I was crap at boxing. Yeah. I was never going to be a boxer, like. Well, catch your fit, kept your fit and all that. <clears> yeah, the, that, that kind of stuff. But I'm saying, if someone was to come up to me now and say, look at Willa. There's a fight there for a hundred grand. Would you fight this fella? Yeah, I would. Oh, I'll take one. Yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd, like, I'd go I'd go into camp um, and I'd bleed. And, you go all camp, would you? Yeah, I'd be going, who wants to fight? <laughs> <laughs> Many rounds, did you say? <laughs> no. <I'd, laughs> Do you know what you are? You are a knockout. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even going to say what I was going to say. I get myself into trouble. You get cancelled. But anyway, um, no, it's like, it, 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 it's like, Everyone has a price for something that they bleed and do. But I mean, if you're fighting someone that knows how to box and you're not a boxer, you're going to get hurt. Yeah, true. I don't care what you say. There's no training. If you even trained for six months, it's not going to prepare you to fight someone. I mean, I was looking at these fellas the weekend just gone and I was gone. Wow. 
like these blokes just know how to like they're designed they're seriously conditioned and fit aren't they like some designed, of these boys they're designed to hurt you like maximum pain like, really I mean I've seen a fella getting dropped um, in the second fight by a fella called Dan Daniel O'Sullivan the Dublin lad and he gave your man a dig in the ribs like oh. and he literally knocked the whole window Spirit out of him, yeah. and I'd say like the, the fella was on the ground and he just couldn't even catch his breath. Wow. So never mind getting a dig in the jaw or whatever. If you're caught down below, your elbows aren't blocking your ribs and you get one of them haymakers. It's like what Thomas Cardi done to your man. I'd say your man is still trying to catch his breath at the minute from the dig he got, you know? So it's a tough, tough game, like, you know? Mm, really is. Definitely not for me, like. I'm going to tell you something, Will, on, on a slightly different note. I, what I was doing last night was, I don't know something about my TikTok algorithms at the moment certain videos keep coming up all the time but a lot of 90s rave comes into it right 90s rave and then I start listening to it and watch it oh my god I forgot all about that tune yeah. and then another, I forgot all about the tune so I went out to Spotify this morning loaded up all these tunes I hadn't heard in years and then and coming in on the bus today just me on the bus like that <laughs> no way people give me weird looks and all that yeah it's, it's what, a, what, a, what a time like me and you grew up at that time with that when oh, stop. The, the rave scene kicked off in Ireland and in Dublin <coughs> and the, the scene was incredible. The, 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 the mansion house, the Olympic, the Olympic around here, like you know what I mean? Two, two yeah. doors up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the toad floor in Fisbury. Yeah, you know yeah. yeah. Uh, G1s he used to call it. Yeah, I used to go to all the raves. And I was kind of, uh, I was kind of a step ahead of it because I was in London yes. before I kind of came back here. So I was on the bus while everyone else was getting ready to get on it. Like, yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. But it was just such a great, great time. And I mean, the laughs, the people that oh. you met from different areas and just going out on the weekend. And, and very little trouble. Very little no, trouble. very, very little trouble. Do you trouble. know what I mean? It was, a, it, was a, it was a scene that people looked out for each other, I really felt, you know? No phones. No phones, exactly, Will. You can't get away. You were going, like you you going back kids. to a party and you actually spoke to people. What? They weren't going like, why don't you see this? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Do you know yeah. what I'm saying? Send me like, a text. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, give us a ring tomorrow. I uh, haven't got a phone in the house. Because I was watching all the the kid, like the younger people's, <laughs> like two hours here, the younger people were posting their videos about the rave over the weekend, <laughs> really. There was, who was it? There was somebody in the tree arena. Yeah, DXS or something like that. GRZ or yeah. something, I don't know. D uh, uh, oh, RSG. Like two old fogies, aren't we? GRZ or ESB yeah. or CLE or EOE or EO. <laughs> <laughs> they were on in there. I know Hannah Lang was there as well. Uh, she's a brilliant DJ now, in fairness to her. But also, there was the other thing over in the RDS. The, what's it called? Silo? Uh, Elro. They had a big dance from 2 o'clock in the afternoon till midnight or whatever. There was a big rave happening in the RDS. So, no I tell you what, the young ravers of today, Willie, they're being looked after when it comes to... 2 o'clock in the day? Yeah, yeah. There used to be a yoke in London called Sunny Side Up, and it used to be a rave that used to be on in the mornings. Oh, yeah. Before you went to walk now. What? Yeah, so people... Was it not an after party, like, from the no, night before? No, no, sure so before, yeah, no. Yeah, so sure before up. you went to walk in the morning at 8 o'clock, there was a rave on at 6 o'clock. Oh, nice. And you used to go in, and everyone before you go into the office or onto the building, yeah. so you, if you bleed and just stay and dance and have so the So you be Yeah, and then you get your set ready, go out there and just jump in the bus and go to walk. Amazing. Isn't that Amazing. brilliant, like? <laughs> Can you, wouldn't that be a great event to have? Oh, yeah. Well, I like, mean, I, there has been one or two I've seen over the years here, like corporate sponsored 7 o'clock Guinness Storehouse. I've seen at 7 in the morning. You'd have a DJ on and people are like, yeah, because it's not done here. But imagine going to walk after something like that. Dance dance for walk or something you could call it. Or yeah, dance, yeah, yeah. dance to walk. Yeah. But you can imagine the feeling like you're going in. I mean, because you know what music does to you? It lifts you up. And I mean, to have people all in there, do you know what I mean, in the morning and bleeding. Just having a bleed and dance and then just going into <laughs> walk would be great. Like, yeah, going in to do heart surgery or something. <coughs> <coughs> like Monday mornings would never be the bleeding same again. Not at all. Do you know what I mean? Not at all. Like Jesus. if you've done them say Monday, Wednesday and Friday, just got a big, big huge room somewhere in Dublin City and just opened it up to everybody. And even if, I don't know, if you just even give a contribution going in. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? And once yeah. a month bleeding, you know. And if you don't, then you, 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 it's a tenner out. No, like, yeah. yeah. No, but I'm saying once, like even you could do once a month where you give... One of the days went to a chosen charity in Dublin. Yes. Say St. Francis Hospice or the Simon Community or Focus yeah. Ireland or something like that. Just make it a little bit worthwhile, wouldn't it? hundred percent. I like that, Will. Any, any entrepreneurs out there willing to uh, to put that event on? Me and Will out will be your MCs. Yeah. Now you're MC Slaughter. Yeah. Back or, in the day. or anybody got a gaff that we <laughs> can use that holds two thousand people. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, MC Slaughter will tell me more about that. I've oh, known you a long time, time and I've never heard that. And the only reason I heard that was because somebody commented on one of our videos. Come here. Recently gone, I remember Will at the race, MC Slaughter. Do you know what? I but swear. I could well believe it, Willie. Sorry, yeah. before you I could well believe it. Because I have seen you doing your, your MC African Babata stuff. And it's like, whoa! If you close your eyes, you would think you're in the presence of, a, of an African London man. Yeah, the, come here, listen, I... I, I all the way kind of through my life, I chance me hand or hand, like, hence the bleeding MC in the boxing uh, <laughs> yeah. thing the weekend, like, and, like, even some of the boxing managers that were there were going, listen, no joking aside, like, you were bleeding great, like, yeah, you were yeah. really good at what you're, what you're doing, like, so it's like, I try my, my hand to hand, and there was a time that uh, I used to do MC at raves, like that London kind of thing, you know, hold, you know, hold tight, here we go, you know. And, here we uh, go. It was, a, it, was a, it was a big thing back then. There used to be a, a, an so, Irish... So, will you, in, in t sorry, just sorry, cutting across here, uh, in terms of the raves, would would you be going up to the DJ box and getting the mic or what's yeah, the story? Yeah, I'd be at the DJ box. No way. Yeah, with the DJ, yeah. So you're at the front giving it yeah, all Yeah, so, so you'd be getting them all going and before the lift had come in yeah, on the yeah. tune, like, you'd be bleeding talk and then oh, you go, you know. Man. Yeah, it was great. Oh, it was man. great crack. But there used to be a rap band there years ago back in the 90s. I don't know whether you ever remember them. And they were called Scary Air. I do know the Scratch Masters. Yes, yeah, DJ yeah. Mick. I'm actually still mates with DJ Mick. No way. To this day, yeah. And he's still Scary Air, yeah. He's still involved in uh, he's still involved in music. No way. He was like one of the best. Like that's when you're going back to like twelve tens uh DJing. There was none of this pioneer bleeding, you know, Digital. Uh, I don't know, yeah. not, I'm not knocking any of that. Obviously, it it's changed. Yeah, it's moved on. But I mean, evolved. back then, like you were actually mixing two records, mm -hmm. and I went to the uh, DJ World Championships. It was on in Club Ninety Two in Leopardstown. In about DJ World Championships were in Leopardstown. Yeah, and, sure and yeah, I swear to God, and DJ Mech was in. We want to see some of the DJs. The, like, the was unreal, stuff was that they were doing was yeah. unbelievable. Like you know, so it's come, it's come all the way on, and music has evolved, and music has changed, and I mean. So, like some of the tunes that we danced to years ago, some of the kids that are dancing to it now, they wouldn't have even been alive when the tune oh, was No, out, like. isn't that the mad thing? Like, you know what I mean? And my brother is 13 years younger than me, Ray Finton, and he does a little bit of DJing himself. He's been doing DJing a long time. He's DJing actually at Paddy Slayer at some event. But he's always saying to me, Well, I'm so jealous that you grew up at that time when it was just coming in and all those classics from over the from the early 90s right through the 90s yeah. to the early 2000s well come here you're one of the best DJs in Dublin living next door to you believe Davo. it or not yeah he was like Dave yeah. was an amazing he was part of the D Banana Boys wasn't he, he? he yeah he was a uh, he was an amazing DJ like yeah. and the likes of him Liam Dollard Billy Scurry uh, there used to be another guy from Ballymun, who works at, has a, has an antique shop now. A fella called Liam Fitzgerald. Oh wow! He was a smashing DJ. Uh, Mick Walsh, uh, Warren Kiernan, uh, to name to name but a few that were of that era of just really good rave DJs. Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? The very first rave I ever went to well, was in the Point, the old Point. Was it uh, Heaven on Earth? Yeah, yeah. It was that the was the Prodigy. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. It was yeah. my first time ever at a rave and gone, oh my god! And there was like I was with it, I was with Gemmo. And uh, and Pat Pat O'Donnell from Coultry in Valley Moon right. and uh, and Patsy Fan and Patsy I know listen, listen to the podcast hello Patsy you Patsy um, and we had a bleeding brilliant night an amazing and I remember all the gang that were around us and they'd heard that that was my first rave right so all the boys at the tops up and all that were going your first rave is it and I was like uh, yeah and I'm like, <gasps> I wish it was you. You are so lucky. I wish this was my foot. Look what you're witnessing. Look at what you're witnessing. Look, I said. <laughs> and I was like, all right, where, 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 I won't tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> but it was an incredible night. But we're not about we're, we're, we're doing support to the prodigy that night. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so come here. Look, we've had a... Uh, We've had great, great DJs. Um, some that should have really went overseas and some... I mean, look at the two boys at the minute, Belters. Oh, really? I know. They're killing it, aren't they? Tony. And Jazzy. Yeah, and she, she's amazing. Well, she's on her own this year yeah. in, uh, I'll, in I'll, uh, uh, Longitude, is it? No, Electric Picnic. That's what he said. Yeah, yeah. Electric Longitude. Um, she's doing her own gig there this year. I was just kind of wondering who's going to be doing the backing music for her because she's usually always with the two boys out yeah, about the zone. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm sure she has a lot of an producers who are producing music for her because she has a voice that is just incredible, like, you know what I mean? And the Wolf Towns are back again this year as well. I thought they were retiring. 
Come here. They're going, so yeah. the Moulin <laughs> yeah, Rouge. Yeah. Anyway, Come here, just as they reach the peak of the popularity of the retire, what? Did you see the crowd that was there for them last year? Electric picnic? Yeah. Oh, will I? It was mental. Like, even the, like, the main stage area had less of a crowd in the elect- than, than the electric uh, arena for the Wolf Town. It was like the 1916 Union reu- ro- uh, reunion uprising or yeah, something like yeah. that. It was mental. I know. It's, it's, it's a mad thing that, I don't know what it is, like young people these days are getting very patriotic. And they're getting in, they're getting in touch with their their history and their culture and Irish music is part of our culture, like you know what I mean. And, yeah. And it's and the bull towns have become as big as bloody boys on our Westlife or whatever, yeah. like you know what I mean. They're incredible. And come here, did you get there this year? We are EP. I was. Who was the highlight for you? Uh, I went to see Fred again, and I loved Fred again. Oh, did you go to see him the fourth time? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I knew that was coming. Yeah, it should be. Oh, he's on again this year. <laughs> Fred again, again. Should be, that's what I'm going to <laughs> I got to see Fred again, again. Um, yeah, I went to. Do you know it was actually brilliant? Noel Horton. Noel Horton. He was on before Fred again. Mullingar's finest. Yeah, yeah. No way. I think he's great. Yeah, I think he's great. Uh, yeah, I went to see him. Um, I'll tell you who else I went to, I went to see. And um, he was on the Talking Bollocks podcast live show as well. And I love him, Maverick Saber. Oh yeah, Look, the English a, lad with the Irish roots. Well, he's he, he, he's, he's he's from Wexford. He yeah. only went to live in London when he's seventeen. All oh, right, I thought he was no. So he's been there like he's been there a while. But what a raw talent! Yeah, what an amazing fella. Some of the musicians and and some of the people that he's worked with over the last few years and. His new stuff that he's doing at the minute is just unbelievable. Is it, yeah. So does anybody listen, give Maverick Saber, yeah. go on to, you know, spot a foyer, go on and have a, have a look at this fella because he's uh, he's lethal, like, you know. From the Saber clan of Wexford. Yeah, from yeah. Wexford, yeah, yeah. Uh, the Wex, he's a Wexican. A Wexican. As they say, yeah. <laughs> um, so it was him and Noel Harden. Who, who else did I go to see? I went to see in a few bits and pieces. Obviously, you go to the Raven, the Forest, yeah. and all that. Oh, I went to see Deck Pierce. Ah, uh, so did I, Will. Sorry, I was there. Ah, uh, Deck. Deck's a good friend of ours. Yeah, he's a great bloke. Lock, Come on. It's like It's like a spiritual awakening. Like. Yeah. And they're the tunes, aren't they? Oh, stop. They are the tunes of our youth. They're the tunes that we raved to when we first came yeah. onto the scene. Amazing. And he has latched onto something beautiful there, Will. He has taken it to a new level. He's got something unique. And his show, I mean, as well, on uh, on the radio is just unbelievable. Like, you know, it's, he, it's, it's it's a nostalgic trip, isn't it? Like, people are just going, oh, man, that was when dance music was at its very best. You know, there's still some amazing dance music being made today. Of course there is. Yeah, like, there's some yeah. brilliant new DJs out there. I love your man, Ian McVicker, Scottish lad. Brilliant. He's top, top drawer. And Sounds like a criminal or something, doesn't Ewan he? McVicker. Ewan McVicker. Ewan McVicker. Ewan McVicker. You all right, Paul? Yes, I cuddle, Paul. <laughs> yeah, Kevin Bridges. That's what I love about Kevin Bridges. Thick Glaswegian accent. Yeah, and the way yeah. he goes, got a problem, Paul. <laughs> Kios. Paul. <laughs> that was one of the best routines you know. Do you remember that one? Kios, I cuddle, I'll stop you. <laughs> and I thought to myself, this man has let me away. <laughs> With this horrid experience for a measly pound. Um, and yeah. there's another thing he says, you're in the WhatsApp group. The WhatsApp group you're part of, and somebody texts, "We're going out in the night out on Saturday at seven o'clock," and Barry comes in with, "Who else is going? What a snide inquiry! <laughs> <laughs> Who else is going? Crazy Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Who? What was the? Do you remember? Well, uh, a particular banger from back in the day that you loved, that you knew." That I'm gonna get on. I'm gonna grab the mic here. I'm gonna MC this before it kicks off. There was a song I always remember, but I can't remember. So you don't remember? The, no, no, I do remember, but I don't know the name of it. Okay. And it used to have your man Tony Montana's name in it. Right. Okay. And I can't think of it. it was a great. Tony Montana great from Scarface. Tune. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I reckon that's ringing a few bells out. His name. To his name used to be mentioned in the song. It was a dance song. Okay. A really good dance song. Say hello to my little friend. Yeah. But if anything, for a good bleeding there. Uh, thing it will be uh, do you know that one which is one of and it's um, there's on the back of my neck I stand there I'm thinking yeah, already get do you remember that one uh, there's a thin line between genius and insanity down on earth oh god yeah and he's going and then he's going oh stop do you remember that one yeah I'm getting a that was just like that was like attack the dance floor like yeah. a bulldozer. I'm, lo- I'm like some of the some of the the older tunes that I was tuned into last night because of the rabbit hole I went down on on the on the t- uh, TikTok was uh, you know that Seven Cities, you know that song. 
Seven Cities. It's a uh, ah. I'll, t- I'll play it to you afterwards. Me just saying names to you and you looking at me blank is not going to work for the podcast. Is the lyrics in it or is it all just music? It's kind of... Does, uh, ah, look, come here. I'm ah, a, come I won't make it show myself. <laughs> no, no, come here, listen. I've, uh, I was only listening to it there before we came in. Uh, who else would that be? Well, obviously Prodigy. Well, obviously my first rave was ever Prodigy. So. Positive had a great record label. Positive? Positive with the, with the cross on it. Was that an XL Recordings? No, Positive it was called. Um, they, they had a great label and come here, didn't you? I was only talking to uh, Billy uh, Smith. Remember, we used to have the record in Abbey Discs. Yes. Him. He was walking on a job he was on. And uh, I was saying to him, he says, oh, I used to have a record shop in town. That was a I Saturday was... pilgrimage for a yeah, lot of people. Yeah, I says, where, where was your record shop? He goes, Abbey Discs. I says, Billy, he went to me. Yeah, I went, Jesus Christ. Wow. Man. Like, and he was, that was like the mecca of like, you know. Well, he had all that white, white labels, labels stuff. and, yeah, you yeah. know, so you, you ordered stuff in yeah. and you go in a week later or two weeks later and he'd be like he'd be lifting her out he'd be like bleeding the priest lifting up the bread at mass you know what I mean <laughs> he'd be coming out he'd be going ah, with that, right? <laughs> the holy grail yeah yeah and you were able to put the stuff on the turntable and just listen to it yeah. before you kind of got it and every that, that kind of stuff is kind of ruined now you know with downloads yeah. and Spotify yeah, yeah. and there's something, and there's something beautiful about having something physically tangible in your hand, isn't there? Like, you know, as you say, like raw material. Yeah, yeah. You know, like there's a lot of work gone into this particular piece, this bit of, you know, this leaflet, this vinyl, everything. There's, there's a lot of thought and work gone into it. And now you download, you pay money, you download a song, pay money, you download a song. <laughs> you pay money and download a song, and you yeah. love the show for it, except for it being on your on your stereo. Like today's DJs will never know the struggle of a DJ carrying two big bags of 12 inches around. Oh my God, yeah. yeah Do you, you know what I mean? About that, yeah. When you think about it. Yeah, yeah. I have some amount of early 90s, 90s dance 12 inches on vinyl at home and they're just gathering dust. <laughs> no way. Yeah. I reckon they could be worth a few sc- sc- scolaros. Um, I showed Deck Pierce one or two of them and he went, how did you get that? I was like, I just want to have a record show. <laughs> got off your man, Billy. <laughs> <laughs> um, have you not got a tone table at home? Me, uh, Darren, my eldest bought me one for uh, my birthday, but it doesn't have any space. It's, it's just a tone table. Do you know what I mean? No, it's loud enough, but it's not, you wouldn't get the full dance feel out of it. Like, you know but what isn't I mean? it mad the way all that stuff is kind of coming back around again? That people are actually buying vinyl. People are buying tone tables. Like, you look at the old stack systems from years ago. Oh, yeah. The separates, the technique separates. And, you know, where you had your you had your amp, you had your... Uh, come here, a lot of people won't remember. You had your double tape. Yeah, the track record the equalizer, treble, yeah, yeah. treble equalizer, whatever it's called. Yeah, the graphic equalizer. Graphic equalizer, your, there we go. You had your CD player and you had your tone table. Oh, well, like. it just brought me back there. I remember being 15 or 16. It would have been the 80s. Miami Voice was all over the television. I remember getting myself a Miami Voice suit at Christmas. Thought it was the biz, all right? One of them speckly suits with the sleeves rolled up. <laughs> white short, pink toy <laughs> pair of loafers. Thought it was the biz, nays. I know. Had one of them bleeding. Them haircuts, oh, no, the, the mullets, like, the mullets. That was last Christmas. That was last Christmas. I seen you in on it. <laughs> <laughs> but it had a big ghetto blaster as well, you know, as you say, like the graphic equalizer, the double deck, massive speakers. I remember walking across the field and fingers listening to bleeding. It's the final countdown. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was the big news. When I think back, oh my God. My mum bought me and my sister uh, record players that ran on batteries. Right, yeah. from, do you remember the shop in Moor Street called the Apollo? Oh, yeah, yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, LA. No way. They used to sell mad stuff, yeah. And I remember getting my first pair of roller skates out there, and I used to go roller skating in your the Your first 80s. pair of roller skates? You're, 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 out you're, the Apollo. You're, you're suggesting that you've had a few pairs. Yeah, you're, yeah. You're roller yeah. skating from yeah. I can't, I can't get you your roller skates. <laughs> bring it the roller skates. I see you are. You put well, your yeah. hand on that. Like, no yeah, backwards you, and all. You used to do break dancing. You just, that's a country me now. And BMXing. Dancing. Yeah. Break yeah. dancing on the with the with the lino. Yeah, yeah. Ah, well, ah, that like that's that's old school <laughs> hardcore. I love that shit. That was eighties. Yeah, do you remember the video going around about yeah. the break dancing in the one? one. Yeah. Chi Chi and that. Yeah, and you were one of them, were you? No, I wasn't one of them in that video, but I used you to break dance. Yeah, yeah. I know you can see you're the mover. You are the mover, though, in <laughs> fairness. And I've been out with you a few times when I'm having a bop. And you're completely sober and clean. And you're the biggest, best dancer the whole fucking Yeah. Day. I was only saying to Jennifer Samparelli the other morning we were on the show. I just casually name dropping there. Just, just no, said to no, Jennifer no, Samparelli. No, 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 you're talking. Oh, hang on. No, hang on. Talking. Sorry. Sorry, sorry. If a phone call couldn't no, hit on. Barack Obama. Hang, hang on a second. Hang on to pick that name. Hang on to pick that name about the floor. <laughs> no. It was myself, Jason Bourne, and Emma Dorn, and we were on a thing Friday <laughs> morning. <laughs> uh, no, it was called Jen's Friends. Oh, right. But I was saying to Jen, I says, I am going to go on, I'm going to try going on Dancing with the Stars. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, like, I reckon yeah. I'll win it. 
You see, I yeah, actually, you know what? I, is, I, I, I actually, thought it was a popularity contest. I am actually not. confident I'd win it. That's so I know your man that's still Larry Bass. Well. Larry, Larry Bass. Bass. Yeah, he's into fishing. <laughs> um, no, I know Larry Bass does it, but I sent him an email. Uh, Fred Cook, who was on the show, yeah. he's a good friend of his as Kevin well. Kevin McGatton was on it. He was on it, and he says, we Willie, there's Dead his email. Nice. So I sent him, I was going to go send him the email, that's a letter, sorry. So I sent him the email, and um, <laughs> he sent me a message back, he goes, grow out me, you. <laughs> no, he says, eh. Uh, no, he said it wasn't getting uh, sanctioned. Uh, what's it called? It wasn't getting uh, brought back. A new series Yeah, he said it wasn't getting brought back. Getting brought back and it wasn't getting commissioned, yeah. So I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. I said, like, so but then it came back then, I was kind yeah. of going... Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna send in again. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm this gonna is Larry, Larry Bass from Shinnewill Productions. You've got your golden ticket sitting in the studio with me right now on the podcast. Yeah. But come Twinkle here. toes, we. I tell you, here's the thing: all the dancer practice that he has to do, the podcast comes first, all right? Yeah, you know the story, Larry. <laughs> Later. Yeah. <laughs> when are we doing the six arena? No, sh- yeah, um, or the seven arena. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We- <laughs> We have to go into that, right? We have to go into that. <laughs> now, me and you have this in joke, right? That 60 followers on the podcast. <laughs> the under nine arena. Me and Will, I love getting carried away with things. And uh, we, were de- <laughs> we were delighted to get the podcast. But then the first week or two, it was at number one and all. Yeah. And we were like, so. Uh, yeah. <laughs> wouldn't even talk to anyone in the house. <laughs> wait me. How well, are you doing with that? Just put the me. dinner on the table and run my one, yeah? Send it to me, Run agent. the bat! Run the bat! <laughs> he misses out. Put out the pins, ask me, eh? We'll <laughs> Don't attempt to ask me to, bro. <laughs> Don't attempt to ask me to do anything in this gap. I'm number one. <laughs> that was me outside at the window. <laughs> <laughs> but I love that. I love that. That foul arrogance that we brought into it. And the messages me and you have. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god maybe someday we'll play them publicly but <laughs> maybe not for from, now from the tree you're in <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> well 20 minutes left quick play that message no that's called visualisation <laughs> and manifestation yeah so let's go back right two gigs stick them on in the uh, in the Liberty Hall theatre bang sold out what you heard me yeah then MCD are going wow this is fucking mad I'm going to say to Will well I'm going to stick you in the Olympia now that'll put manners on you in October yeah stick it on sale Bang, sold out. What? You heard me. Yeah. To the point that only about two weeks ago, Will, they rang you and said, look, we have a cancellation in the Gaiety Theatre on March the 30th. Yeah. Um, somebody's dropped out, but here's the prestige. You will be the first stand-up comedian to do the Gaiety since Billy Connolly in 2013. Like, that's monumental, Will, right? Yeah. And already half the tickets are sold for that. More, just more, more. Tell me how just, you're feeling. I'm feeling really good about it on a, on a positive sense. Like this, to think that I only got it with a with a. My first thing was like he was like, "Do you want to do it?" And I was going, "Cause look, I'm my own, I'm my own uh, worst critic. Like, and I and I and I do suffer with a little bit of low self esteem and a little bit of low self worth and a bit of low self belief, as a lot of people do. But yeah. as a stand up, I do like you know, I sometimes don't. I don't recognise my own talents and I don't realise really how good I am at what I do. And I've got to take a bit of credit for that, that I am. I am good at what I do and I am funny and people want to see me. So my first question was, you know, when is... when is (laughs) 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 Yeah, much. Um, Now, my first question was, when is the gig when he got on the phone? And and Jamie from MCD, who's a a great fella, um, Jamie says to me, it's on the told you to march. I says, Jamie, that's that's four weeks away. Yeah. Like I says, look, you can contend with the Olympia. I says, the Olympia's October, like the eighteenth, and it's sold out, like thank God. I says, but four weeks. He goes, Look at we think I think he says, and we think here at MCD, you'll sell it out, like so they put it on sale and it was like, Jesus Christ. So look at come here. There's six hundred tickets gone as we speak. That's incredible, Bill. So we're now uh, this has been recorded just for people that's watching yeah. on the 19th of March. Yeah, we have 11 so days. So, uh, four, 400 tickets left. Yeah, to sell. Um, we'll come put here, this podcast it's, it's, out in a minute, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> it's actually live. Yeah. <laughs> it's a live no, it's, uh, Yeah, so, look, come here. It's it's the 30th of March. Would I love to sell it out? A hundred percent. Of course I would. I'd love to. Um, but at the same time, I'd be really happy if there were 700 people there. Oh, amazing. And you know, like, really easily 700 listen, at least. And, like, yeah, come here. It, 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 it'd be amazing. And 
And they be saying to myself, I'll get someone else to plug it for you. I'll get someone. And I'm kind of going, you know, no, I'm, I'm not going to bleed and knock on other comic stores and get them to try sell tickets for me. If I'm going to sell them, I'll sell them on my own arse. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And obviously, you know, Joe Dotty, he'll give her a push or bleeding or whatever other platforms or if I'm on the radio like with yeah. Jennifer Samparelli and I was on the Ireland AM with uh, Mickey Bow and that, that other girl, I can't think of her name, she loved Tommy Bow, Tommy Bow. Tommy Bow, yeah. yeah. I was thinking of Dickie Bow, Mickey Bow's brother. Yeah, um, the son of the jelly maker, Harry Bow. <laughs> <laughs> and his, his angry brother, Crossbow. <laughs> <laughs> We've been here all day. Yeah, all day. <laughs> Loads of this shit coming. Yeah, so... Um, <laughs> so... <Crossbow>. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and uh, his sister, Bo K. Um, no, anyway, <laughs> anyway. No, so... Yeah, so... Uh, you know, with, with a bit of publicity and with a couple of probably more radio shows mm -hmm. and a little bit more... Coin to push it. I look. I'd, lo I'd love to sell it out. It's gonna be amazing. Would. It's gonna be a very, very special. It's brilliant. Thing. And you, uh, you are coming on. And I don't even like saying. No. Uh, I don't even like saying you, 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 are the first act on. You, Will I come here? Come here to me. I remember when you got this and you told me, and I was like, wow, I was blown away. Particularly when you heard about the gaiety and the history of it, and the fact that it's twenty fourteen since they have the last stand of comedy gig, and that man was Billy Connolly, our idol. Oh, stop, All right. Man. So. I was so happy for you. And then it was so funny. You ring me back 10 minutes later and I thought something was wrong. And you went, all right. I was like, all right, well, uh, yeah, come here. No, I... no, come here. Let me just say it. And he goes, <coughs> um, I don't know how to say this. And I was like, I thought something was wrong. I was like, I'm pregnant. Is everything all right? Well, I said, <laughs> That's like that's nothing to do with me. <laughs> <laughs> I had protection. No, I just said, somewhere. I just went, what, what, what's wrong? And you went, um, do you want to, do you want to open for me at the gaiety? And I was like, yeah. Oh, nice one. I thought you. I just didn't want to be. And I was like, no way. Well, I like. So I look, like, I'll drop the keys up to you that evening. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Loads at about four yeah. o'clock. Pull the shoes up in the bar there. Make sure the crystal stopped in the box to be grand or right. Yeah. <laughs> I'll drop up to you after the gig. Yeah. <laughs> but you asked me to open for you, and like Willie, I'm so grateful. I can't wait for it. It's going yeah. to be amazing. No, um, it is. It's got come here. It's going to be a great night. Yeah, we're going to have a great night. And come here. I'm going to plug I, it I, I, out of podcast. Here, I've got, I've, yeah. <laughs> no, but look, come here. I couldn't think of anyone better to 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 open for me. Like we we go way back. I love you not only as someone that I'm working with now at the minute, but I love you as a friend. And I mean. When we go into some of the bleeding stories that happened over the years and the crack that we had, which we will in latter episodes, oh, yeah. uh, if we last that long. And, uh, <laughs> we no, will. No, I'm saying like I, I couldn't think of anyone anyone better. And I know I, I, I have Joe there doing other stuff with me and that, but I just kind of thought to myself, Eric, it'd be just ripe for this. And not only that, it kind of gives people a little bit of taste of what they can expect when you do Liberty Hall yeah. in September and come to see you. And because, I mean, in, in my opinion... Like, and I know this isn't a bleeding blow of smoke up each other's arses. I think you're a brilliant comic. Thanks like, very you know? much, Bill. I really, really do. Yeah. Let's have a hug after this, will you? Yeah. Another one. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. one of the things that makes my day is when you ring me and you have a funny story for me because I know when you say you have a funny story, boy, fuck, it's going to be funny. You know what makes me laugh. Yeah. Even the simplest shit makes me laugh. But these stories that you have are amazing. I want you to tell me the story again about when you were younger and your mate <laughs> and the dogs. <laughs> Oh my God, please. The, witch, the dogs? The dogs, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, right, so, right. Paint the picture for me, Will. Paint it from the start. Right, so basically, <laughs> it's uh, early 80s Ballymun. Right. right, so I'd have been, in 81, I'd have been 10. Mm -hmm. And I'd say I was probably about 11 or 12 at the time. I was still in primary school. school and Hang on that. a second, you said you were 10. No, I'd say in 81, I would, I, was, have been, I would have been 10. I would say I was 11 or 12. No, was, no, no. I'm saying I was in primary school, like late stages oh, sorry, of primary yeah. school. Say fifth or sixth. The secondary, yeah, yeah. Yeah, fifth or sixth class. Yeah, like, yeah. And I was still in primary in the Virgin Mary. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I used to hang around with a fella and his dad bred dogs. Like, do you know what I mean? He had staffs and that. Like, So we were all out on the street doing what you're doing. Obviously, there's no phones. You'd be playing kick the can or yeah, you'd be swinging yeah. on bulldog bleeding. whatever yeah. like you know I'm just kind of knocking around but me mate Mark come down like late like we were out and he come down like and we were saying to him what's the story he goes oh, I, I, was up, I was up in the house or up in the flat one of the dogs is in he so one of the bitches is in he mm -hmm. he says and he was up in the gaff 
But like little like I I didn't you know when dogs are in heat, yeah. like in Ballymoon and anyway, like if a dog is in heat, no matter even if the dog has been bred or anything, all the dogs gather around the bleeding house. They like, can scent. They smell the, the scent. Did he be there with the horn outside yeah. the bleeding gate? Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like getting right. going right. She comes out. <laughs> She comes out, she's playing, getting it, like, do you know what I mean? And they'd be all fighting each other and all and bleeding, running around the place. I forced, I forced. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when I got jokes down. Seconds. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, the doggy style, I ain't got to be doing. But, uh, so, he come down to the bleeding, he come down to, we were in Shangan Avenue down, uh, down at the flats. So he come down, he, he says, oh, the dog is in heat. Now, we're only kids, like, yeah, you yeah. know. So next of all, this bleeding dog is just walking up the road. Because you've got to remember, like, back in the 80s, like, there was none of this French bulldogs or these, you know, breeds that cost money. Dogs just roamed the streets, yeah. like. a lot of my mongrels. You know I mean? yeah. it, like, if your dog had a collar, you were posh. Oh, I know. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. half, the, half the dogs went around, he'd no collars on. So this Labrador comes up the bleeding road, and we're all standing there or whatever, kicking the football. And the bleeding dog goes over to me, mate, and starts sniffing him. And next of all, it jumps up in him. Because it could smell the bitch. Oh, that was in heat on him. That, that was, was in heat lap. on the dog. And starts starts riding me mate, right? Dry humping him, like? Right. And, and, and me mate is going... Now, you got to remember, he's only 11, like, so he's only a small young fella. And a full-grown Labrador <laughs> is a big fucking dog. And he's nearly falling over like this. And he's going, lads, get the dog off me, right? And we're all just laughing. Next of all, another dog comes over, <laughs> right? Like a mongrel. Another big dog. And the two dogs, right? <laughs> Yeah, the two dogs are riding the right? And we are all... At this stage, he's crying now. He's going, please get the dogs off me. And we couldn't stop laughing. We were on the floor. The bleeding two dogs are hitting him like this, right? Like two big lipsticks down the bottom of him going like that on his legs. Baby lean. And only for some man was going to the van and seeing us all right laughing. He's going, you shower a fucking oh, idiot. Like a, a fucking yumpler. And he's going over. And he's trying to pull the dogs off. And one of the dogs went for your man, like, Do you know what I mean? The <laughs> fuck off. He's ours. <laughs> he's not <laughs> probably, forced. Probably thought your mum was a paedophile. <laughs> You're not fucking getting him, like, you know. But, oh, oh I, I swear that. to God, we that, couldn't I, stop laughing. That's what like, I mean. Like, that moment when you told me, like, I just pictured the helplessness of that poor young lad with the two big dogs on. I can still be, and I, come here, and I still know him, and every now and again, you know, like, sometimes you'd meet, man, it'd be, be nothing, and then, like, every few years ago, <laughs> do you remember the dogs? <laughs> do you remember the dogs? Go, <laughs> yeah, and come here, that's fucking trauma, like, no, no, do you know no. what I mean? <laughs> can imagine going into a psychotherapist, so what happened? Yeah, it was a Labrador. <laughs> and, and a mongrel. <laughs> and a mongrel. They just, they just treat me like a piece of meat. <laughs> <laughs> I was that bitch. I just wanted to be held. <laughs> <laughs> I got a bit more than what I could bargain for. We have built up a little bit of a following on the podcast. Thanks to everybody tuning in every week. Thank very you happy. for tuning Thanks in, Thanks for yeah. all the lovely positive if comments. If you want to pay on Patreon, do, but we don't, we're not on it. <laughs> we haven't started that so yet. So here's my Oiban and Big Number. <laughs> <laughs> There's some some questions here now. Mo, obviously, they're mostly to you. Uh, the, there is a question from me there going, how, yeah, but, yeah, how did you yeah, blag yeah. that gig? With just Will to Ass? let people know, it's our podcast. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah, not yeah. just mine. No, that's all. I'm okay, Will. I'm okay with them. <laughs> no, I am. <laughs> so there's a there's a quick fire question here from uh, Mick. How do we think about? That was a quick fire question there from Mick. Yeah, uh, thanks, no. Mick. How did Will I get the name Will I? I got the name Will I. It's a Dublin it, it, thing, wasn't it? No, it's not. It's not. It's, 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 I used to rob horses when I was a kid. Sorry? There was, there was murder over this before. I said this somewhere else. And a bloke goes, you wouldn't rob my horse with bleeding. Oh, smash yeah, your yeah. head in and on. And come, the horses. come here, it was bleeding. Back in the day. Yeah, it was 20 odd years ago. Get over it. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, I got the name Will I um, when I used to steal horses or borrow horses and treat them with really a lot of care. Didn't abuse them. You know, give them milk and bread. and uh, them. Yeah, um... I, I used to come into the estate and I used to say, give us a willa. That's what we used to call a whip. It was a willa. It was a, a tree off a, 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 a twig yeah, yeah, off a tree. Yeah. We called it a willa. Is that what it was and called? And that's how I got the name willa. No way. You so know, it's nothing like... to do with my name being Willie or William or... That's mad, Will. It, that's that's I how I never knew that. Because mm. like you you, you, you'd hear the lads called from called Derek, who are called Derda. Yeah. You know, back in the day. And I was just thinking that's where you got No, I got, the, I got the name uh, Willa. That's what they used to call it. I named that after the stick. Name. I named after a stick. <laughs> <laughs> we father camped in the special branch. And, uh, hey. Hey. Uh, 
Who's that's, that's the family tree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're barking up the wrong tree yeah. here, Paul. Well, there you go, Brad Leave Joe. that Brad alone. Joe. <laughs> uh, if you were to create, oh, wow, that's a mad one. If you if you were to create the Irish Ten Commandments, what is three commandments that would have to be on it from a point of view of Ireland? Can I put my hand up for one? Yeah, go on. Midnight mass can be at eight o'clock. That's is that what you're saying? Yeah, midnight mass does not have to be at midnight. Right, okay. I think another another one of the commandments should be, don't be a cunt. Okay, right. Yeah, I just like be that. nice to people. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? There's, yeah. there's enough well, out that, there. That, that, that goes to all across the world, not just Ireland. Yeah. You know what I mean? And another, another commandment would, would be, um, everybody's got to do a random act of kindness every day for somebody. Every day? Yeah. And what happens if you don't? Well, then no one does anything for you then. Okay, right. Well, then you can't expect to receive. Yeah, well, I don't mean you go around looking to bleed and do something, but I mean, if you see a woman that needs a hammer, a buggy, or yeah. you can open the door for somebody and yeah. you know, whatever it might be, I think if everybody in the world was to do a random act of kindness, even once a week for somebody, the world would be an awful lot better place. That's probably more realistic. With you know, <laughs> rather, week, rather, yeah. rather, you know, help people up rather than putting them down. I like that, Will. If you've nothing, if you've nothing good to say about someone, don't bleed and say anything about them. Yeah, like. keep stum. Do you know what I'm saying? 100 percent Will. Um That's six six commandments. There. Really, yeah. <laughs> Tell us about growing up in the flats. I used to live in the flats for a while as well, Will. Now, obviously, I'm I was born and raised. Now, my I, did I ever tell you this before? My first four years of my life, I was down in North Strand, near Sheriff, really. That's where oh, my way? first Yeah, down in St. Bridget's Avenue. Just off, uh, no way. yeah, that's what I that's my first when I was a baby. My ma and dad got a gaff in St. Bridget's Cottages and St. Bridget's Avenue. So my first four years were there. Then we moved up to Finglas, and then obviously I met my missus and I moved to Ballymun and we lived in the flats for a few years. And I have to say, I was petrified going to Ballymun first, first and foremost. So, I had like, this, like, first you were afraid you were petrified, yeah, <laughs> kept thinking. <laughs> 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 and we got on the list anyway, and we got a flat because we had two kids and uh. And I have to say, they were some of the happiest years of my life, living in the flats in Ballymun and yeah. Babbage Lane. Yeah. Like, top drawer, like huge, massive. I love, I love the flats. I remember years ago, we used to go out and catch bees in the jam jar. Yeah, I remember them. Right, but I remember going out one one day and catching wasps. Right, you know the yellow, yeah, yeah. yellow wasps was the thing. I had about 20 of them in the jar. And I was bringing them up so you had holes in the top of the jar. To so you could bring it. Yeah, yeah. right. But when I got up to the bleeding top flight of the stairs, didn't I fall with the jar in my hand? No right? way. And I still have the scar. Look, at, I got six stitches in my finger from cutting myself on the jar. Oh, I was going to say, and how I got, sharp are those And I got wasps? stung twice by two of the wasps as well. Wow. I was fucking screaming on the stairs. My ma actually came out. It was only a, yeah, she yeah. only a kid. So my finger was gushing. And you two, st- and I two stings. I got stung in the neck and stung in the arm. I remember doing that as a kid. That's something, like as we say, like most kids these days are on devices now. They're not out playing yeah. as we used to. Uh, we'd be out morning, noon, and night playing. And that was one of the things we used to do in the summer, wasn't it? Go out with a jam jar, put a few little flowers in it, yeah. catch bees. Yeah. Remember the red ashes, the sugars? Yeah. We used to catch pigeons and all. In a jar? We used to, no, we used to. <laughs> 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 Get in there, you six <laughs> pigeons in the jar with a hole in the top. No, like he used to put a box up at an angle with a stick on it and a string. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I put bread on the eater and that. Yeah. You know what I mean? We got a seagull or something. You're just pulled the stick. I mean, a lot of people, <laughs> lot of people listening to this really annoying. So I'm on robbed horses and pigeons, is it? Oh, we blame Bob for doing this. You got going, going up at me dinner with a seagull under me arm. What's for dinner? <laughs> hey, oh, killed that. Seagull and chips. <laughs> I'll have a KFS Kentucky Fried Seagull. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> so, so oh, I mean, listen, come here. Ballymun, of course, has its problems. Always had its problems, but there is. Did you ever have rock fights? Did you ever have wars? Oh yeah, like we used to have wars. We got Cabernet. a smack of a rock in the bleeding head. <laughs> oh Jesus! I still have the lump on my head. I remember throwing. There was a girl around the corner from when I was about eight or nine. There was a girl around the corner. <laughs> who used to slag me because I had curly hair, and she used to call me Shirley Temple, and it used to freak me out. And I picked up a brick, you know, throwing it in whole direction, thinking I wouldn't hear her. Yeah. Skulled her right in the back of the head, blood everywhere, and what? I ran home. And next of all, a man, dad, coming around, they're knocking on my door, I'm, I'm not there. A man, don't answer, don't answer. She's going, why? Don't you, uh, uh, I think it's uh, Mormons. And <laughs> she, she, she opened the door. It was and, Mormons. It was yes. John Smith and his young man. <laughs> and he let me in, let, let her in. And, and, and I just and that was, was it. Now you're going to Mormon church. Yeah. <laughs> 
and I've been Mormon ever since. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, come here. I, I was in a war with uh, with Coltry, right? So we were Shangan and Coltry was the other side. But I was in behind a crazy price of shopping trolley, right? So we had this, the trolley on the side and there was me and another fella. So we were... Like a little barricade. Yeah, so they couldn't hit us with the rocks. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because you were in behind the cage like yeah, that. Yeah. But did my blade and stick me head up? I'm a child. I could do it. I got a blade and smack of a rock. <laughs> <laughs> Straight in the forehead. Oh, it was like it was like getting a kick off a shire horse. Right? <laughs> and I bleed. My head was gushing and me bleeding. I was like the elephant man. And I grew up to the gaff. That was it. No more wars. No more wars. I was a peace envoy that, after no, that. That's it. <laughs> Need looking for the Nobel Peace Prize trying to stop all the wars. <laughs> It's like a man up dirty with the hanky going through everybody. <laughs> Pipes of peace, lads. Pipes oh, of peace. Stop. Um, <coughs> so, Willie, uh, <coughs> the time is flown by, flying, flying by and you've flown got, boy. you've paid for your parking, which is expiring in a few minutes, so we're going to have to forced. let you go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this has been, you must be joking. You must be joking. <laughs> catch Willa at the Gaiety on March 30th. Tickets on sale. Let's sell this motherfucker out. And catch him as well at the Gaiety and also catch him in the September in the Liberty Hall. <laughs> Boy, tickets are where coming to your gaff. <laughs>